Shalom Aleichem. I'm back in New York after my Gimel Tammuz trip. It's uh, Tuesday. It is Vov Tammuz, Hey Tov Shin Pei Beis. Now I was in Florida for Gimel Tammuz. During that time I recorded three classes on the Maimir which is edited and uploaded and I also did the first which is edited and uploaded in addition to editing and uploading the two fabrengas that I did not Shabbos when I was in Florida so I've been busy since I got back and I want to do this before I lose my train of thought before I lose my focus the Rebbe in 1976, Tav Shalom said, Two my modem, Mitzrayim. Both are quite short. Four Amudim, Be'erech. This one's a little longer than four pages, other one was a bit shorter. And um, they both speak, speak about the classic ideas of Elamase, like I mentioned in the previous class on the earlier Maimir, that in Tav Shin Lamed in 1970, the Rebbe was Masanja Sefer Tedev a Kabbalah's Prime Mashiach Zaken. The Rebbe completed what we call in convention Mashiach Sefer Tedev. The Sefer Tedev to greet Mashiach. And on Erev Shabbos Kodesh, I'm assuming it was Pasha's boy, Oyer Le Yud Shvat, Tov Shem Lamed, 1970, the Rebbe made a siyum and he said a Maim Achsidus, which began Lohov and Inyan, Ksiva Sefer Tedev, by writing a Sefer Tedev. Most of that Maim is actually a Maim of Eil Masi, which as I explained to you in the previous class, makes an awful lot of sense. If you're making a Sefer Teda, that the purpose of the Sefer Teda is the Mashiach Tidkenu, the Torah, the Tersh Peh, the Maimah Chasidis, which goes along with such an endeavor should be a Maimah about the Membez Masois, the journey of the Jewish people from the beginning of time until the end of time, as we see in this Maimah, that the Rebbe argues that the 42 journeys exist in every day of every person's life. The 42 journeys exist in every person's lifetime. The 32 journeys existed in the 40 years that the journey, the Jewish people left Mitzrayim until they came to Eretz Yisrael historically in the year 2448 until 2488 and it exists in the entire history of the Jewish people. From the beginning of history from Etias Mitzrayim until the Zgals of Melech HaMashiach take off from Yad Mamish. So it makes sense that there should be a Maim that speaks about the Sefer Teda of the Kabbalah, the Mashiach Tzedkenu, to speak about the journey of the Jewish people from the beginning of their history until the end of their history. And like I said, these to my modern are quite similar. They're quite similar. But they're not the same. Because, I'm, I'm just going to make the statement now, because in the first moment, Eil Masi, the Rebbe talked about that we do the Avedas Habirurim, we journey through Eretz Ha'amim, through Midbar Ha'amim, until Mashiach said Kena, and then we have an Aliyah. And in this Maimed, it's the same idea, you journey through Eretz Ha'amim, through Midbar Ha'amim. And not the Aliyah happens only in Yidin, but the Aliyah happens in the whole world. So before I begin the Maimed, I want to talk about something. I, I think it's very strongly connected to the Maime, so strongly connected to the Maime that it's the same idea. But of course, you're able to disagree and you're entitled to disagree and you're free to disagree and you're encouraged to disagree. But nevertheless, this is how I see it and this is how I'm going to introduce this Maime. One of the more important Sikhs that the Rebbe edited and gave out for us to learn in the Tkufa immediately before the stroke, Loyalein of is experiencing this year its 30th anniversary. That's the Sikha of Kuntris Ve'ehya Lohem Le Miktash Ma'at Be'inyan Beis Rabbeinu Shababa which came out in the winter of 1991 to 92. So it's 30 years old this past winter. That Maimed as it's been, that Sikha as it's been interpreted has a very nigla half which is incredibly nigladic I would say that the most important quote in that sikh is the Marsha. And the second half is not only chassidus, it's the Deir Ashvi kind of chassidus. It's about us, 
But the Rebbe, but Chazi Kader Atachtein and the final Birurim and the going to Mashiach and so on. In this first half of the Sicha, where the Rebbe talks about based on Ben Ezra and Nigla, of course the the argument that the Rebbe presents is he brings a machlokes and he deduces that it's not real a machlokes; it's Mara Marchade or Mara Marchade of a lay plea. It's two ideas. One idea is that every single shul, every single yeshiva, any place where Jewish people gather is a mikdash mat, is a miniature based on mikdash. And if it's a yeshiva, it's dal damas shalalocha. But at the same time, there is one shul in each generation, which is called the Beis Rabbeinu Shabbat which is, I think, this Lashna Marsha, Tmuras Mikdash Agot L'Shebiru Shalayim. It literally replaces the Beis HaMikdash, and the Lashan is Zim Nenhocha V'Zim Nenhocha. It's only one place. And of course, the argument of the Rebbe in the is that the last Beis Rabbeinu Shabbat is the beginning of the third Beis HaMikdash, and this is 770. Amongst the ideas that the Rebbe talks about in that incredible Sicha, that wonderful Sicha, is the idea that when Mashiach comes, every shul and every yeshiva is taken from Chutzlades, carried to Eretz Yisrael, and it doesn't only mean the building, it means the earth itself, and it's placed adjacent, it's placed next to the Mesa Mikdash, in the third Mesa Mikdash. And the Rebbe goes on to say that in every shul, there are, in every generation, there are many, many shuls, many, many yeshivas. But in each generation, there is only one base Rabbeinu Shabbat Bavo. So the Rebbe says, all the shuls, all the Bateknesias and Bate Midrashas of a particular time, are be, going to be connected to the base HaMikdash through the Mikdash Ma'at, the base Rabbeinu Shabbat Bavo of their generation. I mean, the shuls of our generation are be connected to the base HaMikdash, the Yasid Lavi, through 770. That's very straight. That's what the Rebbe is saying. So in every generation there is one base on Mikdash, one Mikdash Miyat, that base on Benesh and Bavo, which is Tmurus and Mikdash Yadl Bidu Shalayim. And because they're the most important, because they're basically Bithfield, they call it Chala Amim, Tel Tal Piyaz, Chala Piyaz, Kenim Lasham, all the different ideas that the Rebbe discusses in that Sicha. That one shul is going to be closest to the base on Mikdash itself, and all remaining shuls are going to be connected to the base on Mikdash through that one shul. Now, I've learned that Sicha many times, I've taught that Sicha many, many times. And in learning that sikh and in teaching that sikh, this is how I came to understand it. And I think the Rebbe says it, but I'm saying it in this way. This is the way I came to understand it because, as I've said before, you this is one of those points that's not explicit, it's more implicit, and you're, of course, able to and free and permitted and, and encouraged to disagree. So I'm giving it to you as if it's my own thought, but although I think it's pshatak in the sikh. We know about the idea of Ayyad right? Everybody knows of Ayyad in the perspective of Kabbalah, it's one of the purposes for creation. Hashem created the world, not only for godliness to be brought into the world, but Hashem created the world, and He made the world in such a way that even though the world by itself is perfect, there's real place and need to correct it. Why? Why would the Abish make a perfect world and yet he creates the world in such a way that we need to correct it? So there's a variety of different answers, and one of them is because he wants to be Mamshach Eid as the Teva Kelatuk, and Hashem wants to bring into a finite world infinite lights, which is impossible. So the Abisha, so to speak, gets it in through the back door, indirectly, by there being a higher world called Elamateu, before the lower world, which is Elamatikum. And Elamateu has a Shvida, it shatters, and the sparks fall, and they become the life of Klipa. And when you Mavada them, when you correct them, when you order them, when you rearrange them and you make them the way they're supposed to be, they can be incorporated into our world so that you have infinite lights in a finite world within the parameters of earned avoida and within the parameters of order, of seder. The idea is that the Abishta made the world perfectly and then the world got scrambled. It was in effect made imperfect by whatever means. And Avedya Sabirudim is our task of re-perfecting it. And that's really the meaning of the word Tikkun. Tikkun means order. Tikkun means everything, Akel, Bam, Akel, Mebe, Shalom. Everything has its place. So you speak about sparks. The sparks are lost in Klippa. But the meaning, the philosophical idea of the sparks being lost in Klippa means they're in the wrong place. They're not where they're supposed to be. So when you separate a spark out, and you bring it back to a state of Kedusha, rather than being in a matzav of Achmon al of Hel of Menaged Lalakus, in a state of Klippa, in addition to redeeming that spark and taking it out from where it is trapped, is 
you put it back in its place. It's called Hashav, it's called Tshuva, returning it, putting it where it belongs. And completing this Avoidah, this mission, this purpose, of taking every spark that the Ebishter displaced in this world and taking it out of the Klippa trap that it finds itself in and then putting it back where it's supposed to be means creating Tikkun, perfect order from those aspects of this world that are disordered, that are not besaded, that are not they're supposed to be and making them all be precise where they're supposed to be. So Avedas Habirudim is not just retrieving sparks and elevating sparks and perfecting sparks and refining sparks but it's putting the sparks back in the ideal place where those sparks were meant to be if the world had been created perfect without a shvira. So when I was learning that it dawned on me that this is the pshat. When you have a shul in America, in Canada, in Mexico, in Germany, in England, in France, in Sweden, in Switzerland, in Holland, in Denmark, in Norway, it doesn't make a difference where. Spain. That shul is a piece of Etzro. When the Abishra created the world, he created the world in such a way that uh, the center of the world is Eretz Yisrael. That's why the potato always tells us that Eretz Yisrael is Goveim and Kolarat, he's always ascending upward. It's always like the head of the world, even though the world is a globe. But philosophically, the world is a body. And the head of the body is Eretz Yisrael and Yerushalayim and the Beis Hamikdash and so on. But when the Abishra affected the disorder of the world, Shtikalach Eretz Yisrael, pieces of Eretz Yisrael were scattered all over the world. Or to say it even more, sharply pieces of Beis HaMikdash were scattered all over the world and when Yidin go through their Golos and they come to the various places where they go and they build a shul in a particular spot it's not the Pshat that they're bringing Kedusha to that space as that space was a shul from always because that space is really a piece of Eretz Yisrael that space is really a piece of Beis HaMikdash but the Abish that displaced it, and he didn't come to that place, and Bashgoch brought us the builder with the Abbas Knesset and the Abbas Medrish. So when Mashiach comes, and those buildings, and those pieces of earth, which have become but the Knesset and but the Medrashas, in the Mekoymes Ashabo Sham, and the land where the Jewish people go in exile, and this building and this piece of land is somehow raised up and moved and placed adjacent to the Abbas Mikdash. The Chiddush is not that you're taking a piece of Chutzlah that's and putting it next to the Beis HaMikdash. The novelty is you're taking a piece of what was always at Yisrael from before time. It was always Beis HaMikdash from before time, but was entangled, was placed in the wrong place, and you're putting it back where it belongs. In other words, just like the elevation of sparks is not only retrieving something from a bad place, but it's putting it where it's meant to be. The same is true when you didn't travel all over the world. And they build what you about the Midrashas, and those shuls become part of the Beis HaMikdash. It's actually taking something which was always Beis HaMikdash and putting it back where it was meant to be. This idea and this process is called Tikkun. Tikkun means making the world perfect, ordered, as the Abishta designed it. The Abishta himself disordered it to a great extent. And our Avedis Habirudim is reordering it, is taking the sparks out of Klippa, and then he shoved and putting them back where they're meant to be. This is my introduction. What I want you to consider now is that the Veda Sabirudim, according to what I just said, has two things. The idea of the word Bira means creating clarity, right? There's a confusion, there's a mixture of nuts and shells, and you separate them. That's what Bira means, Bira Rasa. Birudim means to separate good from bad, to simply identify the good which is entangled with an evil, which is confused with and what's not good, and separate it. But according to what I'm telling you, there's a process of separating it, there's a process of isolating it, there's a process of raising it up and making it into holiness, but there's a whole other process of putting it back where it was meant to be. And putting it back where it was meant to be makes the world perfect. This is called Tikkun. And when the world is perfect, and the world is completely ordered, everything is where it's supposed to be, so then the capacity to receive in soft, to receive godliness, even though all of them is Bhamdid of Agbala, is, is far greater than when it's disorderly, when it's entangled. In other words, Avedah Sabirulam is a process about finding something which is put in the wrong place and f- taking it out of that bad place, number one, and number two, putting it where it needs to be. When we speak about Avedah Sabirulam, we speak about the first one. Because Avedah Sabirurim goes under the umbrella of Kol Adrochem Bechaz Kasakana. 
you're going to a place of evil, which puts the neshama that's going to that place and doing that work in a state of risk. And the neshama takes this risk to find a lost spark and excavate it out of the gook, out of the quagmire, out of the, the cave or mine where it is entrenched, extracting it, separating it, isolating it, cutting it, polishing it, setting, making it look beautiful. That's one process we do with him. And then after all of that is done, you put it where it's supposed to be. An idea which is very similar to this, and perhaps it's exactly the same, but I'm, I, I don't want to say it, but certitude. An idea that is very similar to this, it's what's called the Chesidus and Kabbalah, Biru Sheinim al Maila Lamat. So when Hashem creates the world, there's something called Shem Ban Hamizbarit, which means if you want to correct the world, you have to become a part of it, which is what we do. On the Shama comes into this goof. Nef Shabahamis, Mishchad Chivya, the Gansa Maisa, the Nisham is a part of the problem. The Nishama finds itself in the quagmire of the world and somehow figures out how to serve Hashem to whatever extent it's able to do so, and in doing so, it's extracting the sparks. But when the Neshama finishes its entire task, it's found the spark, it's excavated out of the, the iron ore, the taruvas, the entanglement, it's cut it, it's polished it, and then it needs to be put back where it needs to be placed, in its correct place. But this has to happen from the top down. This called Birur Sheni Mulmaila Lamata. Hashem does that. We do everything. We find the diamond, we pull it out, we cut it, we polish it. But the Abish the Malach Malach Machol Keshik Sadim Lukadim it feels saying shall you start putting the spark back where it needs to be, Vehishavas Zelash or Gozal. He's shoving, putting it back where it needs to be, it's called Mulmai Lamata. Hashem has to complete the task because we're not able to do it. Because no matter how perfect as we're going to be, we're not perfect enough because we're a part of the problem because we have to go into the world and so on. In light of this, you have in Tanya an idea, which I talk about all the time. I talk about it all the time because it appeals to me. I, I like the chap, the concept. It is a classic quote from that Ezo that has one prefix and two suffixes. It starts with, a, with, with the same words, but it can finish in two different directions. The beginning of the sentence says, atzma, atzma, ain't a The neshama itself needs no correction. The neshama is perfect. So if the neshama is perfect, why did the neshama have to come into this world? So there's two ends of that state, but the first end is lakel behem, chayis, gufe, nafshe, ruchav, and neshama. This is Tanya Sof, Pedag, Lamed, Aleph. That the perfect neshama comes into an imperfect world to give correction to the world, to give beater to the world. The second suffix is Haneshama Atzma in Atzicha Tikkun El Aliyah. The Neshama comes into this world with the elevate sparks, and in so doing, the Neshama is putting itself at risk, as I explained before. And the point of all it is that the Neshama, as the expression, the Neshama is Al Habman Aliyah. The Neshama goes to a higher place. The Neshama's Aliyah is very similar to the second point that I made earlier about putting something where it belongs. Now, I'm not saying that these two are the same. They're not. The idea of Birur Shadim al Maila Lamata and the idea that the end of Birurim is putting everything where it's meant to be in the order of Tikkun, I don't think, I don't believe that they're the same. I think they're connected, but I don't believe that they're the same. But they are similar. And it is for this reason that I just spent the last 20 minutes talking to you before I even begin to teach the Maimir. Because this is a maimit about the journey. This is the journey of the Jewish people who left Egypt. And of course, you'll see it inside. We learned it in the previous maimit. The Neshama travels 42 journeys. Every single journey, they're still leaving Meitz HaRagvul. They're still leaving Egypt. Because they're going out of limitations. And the process is that they go through Midbar Ha'am in the desert. A place where the sparks of the Abish that are lost. They need to be retrieved. But that in order to retrieve it, the Neshama has to go there. And that's kol adrocha machas kasakana. The neshama is putting itself at risk in order to elevate sparks. But the maimed doesn't focus so much on the process of elevating the sparks. The maimed focuses instead on what happens when the job of elevating the sparks has been completed. You went through all forty-two journeys, and you're now arrived at al yard and yerechi. You're at the precipice of going into Eretz Yisrael. You're the precipice of being makabel pnei mishiach zetkeni bepeil mamish. The end of the bidur. And the end of the Birurim is that after you find those sparks and you pull those sparks out and you raise them up and you clean them, you put them back where they're supposed to be. And it seems to me that in this, there's two steps. 
The first step is putting the neshama back where it's supposed to be. And the second step is putting the world back where it's supposed to be, taking each piece of the world and putting it where it knows it's supposed to be. The first Maimed describes how when the job of Birudim is finished, the Neshama is put back where it's supposed to be. And that's the idea of Yerid and Tzayirach Aliyah. When the Neshama finishes the Birudim, the Neshama has an Aliyah. This Maimed we're about to begin is speaking about Asida Eret Yisrael, Shetespashat Bechol Aratzes, that the whole world becomes Eret Yisrael, that after every piece of this world has been clarified and put back where it belongs, that the pieces of Eret Yisrael that found themselves in Chutz Laretz are placed next to the base HaMikdash HaGodl Yerushalayim, and there's not a single piece of Eretz Yisrael any place else in the world, so the world becomes an orderly place, an absolutely orderly place. And after that order is achieved, then the world has an Aliyah. In plain words, just like in the previous Maimon, the end of Birurim is an Aliyah for a Neshama, in this Maimon, the end of Birurim is an Aliyah for the whole world. So neither Maimon is going to focus on Birurim. Not the one we learned, not the one we're learning. Both my modem are going to be focusing on the end of Birudim. When you finish the Kaladrach of Sakana, taking the risk of going into this world in order to separate the good from the evil in this world, there's an Aliyah to the Neshama, that was the previous Maimir, and there's an Aliyah to the entire world, which is this Maimir. And of course, the irony is, with the Abish created the world, there's sparks of goodness all over the place that have to be taken out. Or there's pieces of Eretz Yisrael everywhere that need to be taken out. And Dafka, when you take every piece of Eretz Yisrael out of Chutz Laretz and put it back in Eretz Yisrael, so Lachoira, arguably, Chutz Laretz has fallen to a lower level. There's no longer shuls and yeshivas in Chutz Laretz. But in the place of order, the very fact that everything is where it's supposed to be, Akel Baal, Akel Mibi Shalom, the Abish that intended it, that every piece of Eretz Yisrael is in Eretz Yisrael, every piece of Yerushalayim is in Yerushalayim, and every piece of Chutz Laretz is where it's meant to be in Chutz Laretz, then the whole world is able to have an Aliyah. The Tikkun, the perfect order, makes it possible for the world to have an Aliyah. And it seems to me that that's what the Rebbe is going to say in this Maimah. That just like in the last Maimah, the end of Elam Masay is an Aliyah for the Neshama, in this Maimah, the end of Elam Masay is an Aliyah for the whole world. These are the journeys in plural of the Jewish people as they're leaving the land of Mitzrayim. The places from which they left and the places to which they, arose, they arrived. These are the journeys. That means the places that they came to in relationship to the places that they left. And of course we learned the previous Maimon where the Rebbe explored these details, these questions, with more detail than he does in this Maimir. Here the Rebbe only asks two questions. We know the questions of the Lukutatayim. The expression Masay, which means journeys, which is Lush and Rab in plural. And these journeys represent leaving Egypt. And the question is, leaving Egypt only the first trip, the first journey, which is from Ramses to Sukkot, yes, I mean Ramses. Because once they left Egypt, they're no longer in Egypt, so what does it mean that they've been traveling out of Mitzrayim the whole 42 years? And of course, the answer is this means Mitzrayim de Beruchni, it's Mitzrayim de Gedusha, Mitzrayim de Liuma, they're going out of Mitzrayim of And the next question is, why does it suddenly have to say that Mesha Rabbeinu wrote this? Wrote the Membeis Masois. The Mestama Mesha Kosve. Obviously, Mesha Rabbeinu wrote it. Kichola Teda. Like the rest of the Teda, Shakadish Baruch, who Aim and Hashem dictated it. U Mesha Kase and Mesha Rabbeinu wrote it. Everybody's saying, Tigimon of Baba Basre. Right? Sefer Dvorim, it is a clear. And even Dvorim, you read that Amban, you get the impression that it was really dictated. It was just dictated in a signal as if Mesha and Piatme Kosve. But the first four Svarim certainly is a, dict- is a direct dictation from Hashem. Meshach Rabbeinu is writing down the Abishta's words. So why all of a sudden you have to point out that Meshach Rabbeinu is writing? Meshach Rabbeinu wrote it all. And again, the answer to this question is going to be, because this is in Asinas Koyach, Meshach Rabbeinu is writing it, considering the Madrega of Meshach Rabbeinu gives us Koyach to bring from our Shedesh HaNeshama, which is called Meitz Ehem, to our Neshama Malubashas Beguv, which is called Lamas Ehem, to be able to go through the world, to do the birudim, and then in the end, when we finish our task, we go back to our Shadesh Hanishom, and this is our Yerid Tzayrech Aliyah, and appreciate 
there's three steps. There's Vayichta of Meisha, Meisayim, Lamaseim, bringing down from the source of the Neshama into the Neshama in the Guf to do the work. Then there's the work itself. The work itself is going through the Midbar Amma, which is the Birudim. And our Maimon mentions that, but doesn't speak about it with such Ariches. And then, Ve'ela, Mas'ela, Ela, Meitz Eyem, there's the Yerid, Tzayrech Aliyah, going even higher than the Shedish Shemokar. That in the previous Maimon, it meant that the Neshama has an Aliyah. And in this Maimon, the whole world has an Aliyah. That's how I'm understanding it. And the Rebbe continues, Vin in his Bayel, Kutu in the previous Maimon, I already said. Maimon, the Rebbe said Thursday night. This is a, literally a day and a half later. The Kmoish, how you was on Masai, is just like then. Over the 40 years from the moment he had left Mitzrayim to the Kamdat Yisrael. There were those 42 steps made it. Mitzrayim, Madme, Eva, the Adi Yerecha, from leaving Egypt till they come to the precipice, till they come to the threshold, till they come to the horizon of the opposite side of the Jordan. Next to the city of Jericho, going into Yisrael, in a mighty office. Sim and Lebonim, what happens to the fathers is an indication to the children. And I told you in the previous Maimon the three expressions. Maisi Ovis Sim and Lebonim. Maisi Ovis and Sinas Keach Lebonim. And the Rebbe, of course, insists Maisi Ovis. Teda, Hayro Lebonim. Kenugam, Klolus, Meshach Adedis. The entire history of the Jewish people, me, it's Yitzhak Mishayim and Golas Seder from the moment left Egypt to Mashiach comes. They're divided up into 42 journeys. Each journey is Be'erech. How much? A little bit less than 100 years. If 3,350 years Be'erech. From its Yisma time till this Galza, Melech HaMashiach, take it Yad Mamish. And Membe is Masoy, so you can do the math. How many hundreds of years each mass? Of course, you and I both understand that that's not the case. It could be Masoy, which is a minute. Yem Valaylo, and it could be for years. Mitzis Mitzrayim, from the time you didn't leave Mitzrayim, much of Boim El Me'evil Yad de Mizracha to the eastern edge of the River Jordan, which is Mashiach. Harkach, Evil, and 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 Evil, I know Akni, so that it is so, which is the actual entry into Eretz Yisrael, which is Aidei Mashiach said Canaan. This is already the work of Mashiach. And he, Aidei Hachana, it also involves the preparation of Ha'avoida, the Membez Masai, the work of the 42 journeys. B'mesh, Akal Adedis Kulm, during the duration of all of our history. And the Rebbe continues, V'chein, additionally, Gam, B'mesh, Akal Chayyeh Odom, not only in the entire history of the Jewish people. Do you have the Membez Masois, but in the individual life of each person, from the moment they're born until the last Biotka after Dru Khipatis Aes Shem Kela Mes, you also have Membez Masois. Over Pratis Yesim more specifically, Baveda Se Bachol Yem the daily avoid. That every individual day is Meshalkal Membez Masois is divided up into forty two journeys. Commission is by Elder Brot from Balshemtiv. So we have four ideas, right? The 40 years in the desert is Membez Masois, the whole history of the Jewish people is Membez Masois, the life of each person is Membez Masois, and every day is Membez Masois. So there is, before the Membez Masois begin, which is Yichtev Meishas Meitzayim Lamaseim, there's after the Membez Masois is finished, the Eilam Masayim Lamaseim, and in between the two, there's the Membez Masois themselves. So let's skip. Let's go to number three, which is near the bottom of page 273, and we're going to learn. And we'll get back to the little piece that I skipped now, and the piece on the next page, which I'm going to skip, at the end of the Maimed, when we finish describing the Midbar Ha'amim Mulchama itself. The way we get to the Gulamit is Vashlema. I the Mashiach said, Kenu, when the Neshama has an Aliyah and the whole world has an Aliyah, you have to go through the journeys. I day, Hamasoy is by Midbar, and the journeys take place in the desert. But are you fit in such a fashion? They say, if name, you have to have a help. The, the Ark of the Covenant of God travels ahead of them. Vanani, I come along with the clouds of glory, and together, they killed the snakes and scorpions in the desert. That spiritually represents Eres Nochash, sort of a Akra of a game, the idea of Klipo. So you didn't have to travel through the desert. And the Abish has to help them travel through the desert. But to travel through the desert, you didn't do avoid the Bakoyach Atzmam. This is called the Vedas Habirudim. And like I said in my introduction, there's a Hislap, Shed Bufu Shaham is Barat. Like it says in Samach Vov, until it's as if it's called Shame Ban Hamiz Bara, the Alukus itself is part of the Birur. Because that's the degree of his lapshos, and days uh, through this, and they subdue the klipa. Shiuchalias Liyasid Love, the Mashiach is going to come. Not only will all the sparks be separated from their entanglement and raised up and put into Kedusha, but Lias Hagilid Liyasid Asidah, which I'm going to get back to at the end of the Maimon. 
So, at the moment, we're not talking about the before. We're not talking about the after. We're talking about the beard itself. Now, turn to page 274, and let's read number 4 from inside, which is the second paragraph. Om Lama Wever. But that gufa, when we say that in between the beginning of the journey, and the end of the journey, there's the journey itself, and the journey itself is a journey of what we do to prepare to the Asid Yisrael which is going to be at the end, when the world and the Neshama has an Aliyah. But now we're talking about the Birur, which happens first, says the Rebbe Yeshne Mishneyafan, there's two techniques to Birur. And on the next page, the Rebbe is going to say it's not two, it's three. To be sure, I'm not, I don't understand fully why this is Negei and this Maimir. But B'chalef and the Rebbe brings this here. It says, the Rebbe, Yeshne Mishneyafan, there's two ways of Birur. In other words, in finding entanglement in the world and disentangling it and raising the good up and disposing of the evil and ultimately putting the good where it really belongs is Bira B'darach Muhammad is a disentangling which is done through a Muhammad through a struggle or Bira B'darach Manuchan is a disentangling which is done in a more peaceful way both of them are dealing with evil both are dealing with the confusion of Teiv and Rad that has to be deconfused disentangled but one gets involved so personally that it itself is a part of the struggle and that's why it's a Mulchama and the other does it in a less direct way which is a Bidr B'derach Menucha and the Rebbe says Bidr B'derach Mulchama this is classic the clarity made in this world which is considered a war is through prayer and of course in my modem it says that prayer is called Mulchama Cherev Shal Shalom but the Hanig Memein Derecher it's living in the real world and involving yourself in Gashmi that's Mamish and it says in the Zayanama Pumchar Balechel, any involvement with Gashmias, including eating bread, is done with a knife, which is the idea of a fight. So the boy, the Agdamas Atril, involved the preparation of davening. So therefore, the davening itself is considered a part of the Mochama, like it says in the Pazi Bacharbi, or Bakashi, the Yanka, of Inu, defeated Shem. With my sword and my bow and targum unkulos bit slaysi babuusi with my prayer and with my pleading, so davening is considered a mulchama. So there's a bir a b'darach mulchama, which is through getting involved in the physical world directly, including the emotional involvement of davening. And then there's bir a b'darach menucha. There's a clarity created in the world which is more peaceful, which is ideally like what this is accomplished through studying teira. And the Rebbe goes into the classic illustration for this. It says in the of lag beimer. Hayadu achilik ben Avi des Rashbi lecheni amagal lecheni amagal lived much earlier than Abshem by Chayyol. Although the Rebbe brings over here against the pilpul when lecheni amagal lived, but lecheda lecheni was in the zman of the zugis. Here the Rebbe brings different shitas. I shouldn't say lecheda, but Abshem by Chayyol was after the korban, and yet lecheni amagal him sheikh kiri des agshal lecheni amagal needed to make it rain. How did he do it? Ayadei had tefillah, so we had to daven, and therefore with Bira, but Derech Mochamer was a struggle, which is why Og Uga had to make a circle around himself. For also Kamish Tal Gluya, he had to make many efforts. Le kach bi kashi, le kach bi kashi, until he got Gishmi Bracha. Hakach ayet tarech letamtem mashba. Then he had to limit the flow of blessing from heaven to earth. Shatihi yelif yadach el, the world to be able to receive it. So Cheni Amago. That according to some days was much earlier than Ashbi because he brought the rain through Tfila. It wasn't simple. It was a struggle. It was a struggle within him, or was a struggle with the world to bring the rain, and the rain should be fit according to the world's capacity to receive it. Simply said, Teda. Teda is called Shalem. Teda is also called Oiz. Teda is called Shalem. And when you learn Teda on a Madeg of Rashbi, which is Teda, say Yom Nasei. So malachta chanasa de achedim, you learn teda, and the world automatically remedies and heals itself. That he said a teda on the pasuk and he matav manoim shavazecham gam yochet. And of course, the Rebbe once pointed out that this means a teda in the inav avis yisrael. And then hamshalcha sagshal my day rashbi rain came and hoy sabevin shal menuch. The rain came right away. The rain came with no effort, and the rain needed no tweaking it came lachatchile perfectly or bederach memeil lefulkiyam lakabel automatically according to our capacity to receive and the Rebbe adds bracket as a shayach leposik shavuz echam gam yochad choli gamer that it came according to our capacity to receive so both in terms of bringing the rain and in terms of making the rain suitable for us cheni amagel struggle and Ashbi had it easy because cheni amagel made it rain through tefila and Abshem beyachoy made it rain through teira. 
So Teir is also involved in Gashmias, right? Teir makes it rain. That's the whole idea of Teir Asim Nasim and Lachdach Al Nasa Di Achirim. The Rebbe is saying further, not only Teir of the Shaykhs, but Gashmias, Teir of the Shaykhs with Birur. We're disentangling the entanglements within the world. And Teir is Birur is Ocho Baderach Sholim. Shemizerim, which proves to us, Shabij, Havid Yasel, both of these techniques. Yeshtim Gambis Managos applies even now in Golos. Shimba Yechai Zavid applies in Golos because he lived in Golos. Even though many shittas hold that Chayin Yabagel was b'zman Abayis, namzir Rabbi Samita Shalachin, Eimim Allah, which is why the Gemara says about him, Shah Yashivim Shana b'matzav Shal Hayiruk Achel. In seven years, he was like in, as if he was asleep; he was dreaming. And there are some who say the Koyal Ayin Shana Shem Abayis Tishal Abayis Shena was the seven years in the first Batei Mikdash, first and second Batei Mikdash. Alim Avur b'Maseches Tainis, even if he was in Zman Abayis. So the beat of a derech tefillah you could say is limited as manabais, but there's other Indian hatfila the idea of people davening al hagishamim to make it rain. Eitzel eight tanoim, but other tanoim who certainly lived after the churban. For example, Abba Chilki and Abi Akiva, the chulu. He rebbes mitzayin to the gemara and mesech the tainus that tell these stories. So not only are these two avoidus of teid and tefillah both methods of birudim. Of Avodas Hashem and Birudim, they're both methods of Avodas Hashem and Birudim in Zman Agolas also. Vayadei you Avodah Beis Efanim Elu through serving in both of these ways. He Achon it's the preparation, it's the Birud which comes before. The Asid to Eretz Yisrael Shet Aspashet, which we're going to talk about at the end of this Maimed, when I because I'm recently structuring the Maimed to leave the idea of Ali of the world to the end. So there's two methods of Birud, Teira and Tfil, and the Rebbe continues and he says number five in your text. Near the top of page 175, where Pratis Yesim was specifically, is Aved, the Bechol Gimel Amudim. It's not two poles, but three. The three poles, Shalei, Yame Elam, Eimid. It says in Mishnayis in Pei Kamed, the Ovis. Teir Aved and Melech Hasadim. Teir is Shalom. Aved is, here it's been called Mulchama, but in Ranat, for example, in Hemshech Padre Shalom, which is based on the, the source of the Hemshech of Tav Shedal for the Rebbe Ayatz, it's called Cherev Shel Shalom. And Gimel Chasob, this is Mochama Mamish. Mamish Mochama. Even more than Tefillah. The Aved, Aved the Tereb Amshacham Al Maila. Tereb brings God down. Aved the Tefillah Allah Al Mata and Davin created the world up. Aved Gamach through using all physical things, which are compared not to a light, but to individual candles. And Aved Hashem, Eitim Leis Barach Dira Betachtene, make him a home, which doesn't only mean he has a house, but he has a home with Dira Noah, which is a beautiful home, with Kalim Noah, and beautiful furniture, which is the inner clothes, Maisa HaMitzvah. So Maisa HaMitzvah is the furniture. Tere and Tefillah make the home, and Maisa HaMitzvah make the home beautiful. They make the Kalim for the home. So first the Rebbe says this, two drachim and birurim, and then the Rebbe says this, three drachim and birurim, but whether they're two or they're three, these three or two steps in birurim are in between the vayichtev meisha and the ve'elam meisha eim. They're in between where you didn't come from and where you didn't going to. You didn't come from at the beginning of avoidah and where you didn't going to at the end of avoidah. It's the avoidah birurim itself, which is our history, right? We're in Eretz Ha'amim, we're in the land of the nations. We're in Midbar Amim, we're in the desert of the nations, which shows on a severe entrapment in Klippa. And like the Rebbe said in the previous Maimon, we don't only survive it, but we actually transform it and elevate it. Number six. Omnam, the question is, How do the Jewish people have the strength to bring godliness into the world? And they see that it is all done in the end. Not only they're going to elevate the world and bring clarity to the world, they're going to bring about that at the end of the avoid there's going to be an aliyah to the world, how could this be? In Lazak, see if for this purpose the Pasuk says, And again, there's two in Yonim here. The first is the Birudim itself, and the second is the aliyah, which is after the Birudim. And Lacha'eira, the Vayichtev Meshes Negea, not just what happens after the Birudim, to the Birudim itself. How did you survive life on this earth? The Meisha, Meisha Rabbeinu Shuharei, and Emen Shel Kol Yisrael is the reliable, trustworthy shepherd of the Jewish people. And like it says in the Yatat Tetzaveh, he's the shepherd of faith of the Jewish people. Makasha Bechinus Meitz Eiyem be ties our Moitza. Parenthesis: Sheidu Shemaker Haneshama, the root and source of our Haneshama is Im Haneshama Kmeishi Lamato, with the soul which is down here in the body, and that's the meaning of the words Vayichtev Meisha. As Meitz Eiyem Lamasei, Meisha Rabbeinu writes, bringing down from the Madrig of Chikit, the Madrig of Ksiva, like it said in the previous Maimed, from the source of Neshama Yisrael into the Neshama Mulubeshes Beguf. 
Va'at to such an extent, she called just all every Jew says, but call yom every day because I've had the neshama. She has to be the neshama that I have in my goof. Started out as tehidi, and then after the fact, it starts out as pure, and then Hashem blows it. Umam she the mam she Hashem Meshe Rabbeinu brings down. Bebrin is tehidi from the level of the neshama which is toy, which the clothes goes on until the bechin is the fact to be. To the neshama mulebeshet begoof shehi bechin is haregel she be neshama which is called the foot of the neshama. Hamas lebeshet begoof which is invested in the body. Hanim to beilam atachnet finds itself in this low world. How low is this world? Like it says in Tanya Pedek Lamed Vav Shein Tach Tol Lamata Mimen. There's no world lower than it. Darkei Achlas has the strength for this. I day bechinas Meishah of Kolachad Echad. Meishah Rabbeinu gives us this koyach. Meishah Rabbeinu has das. Meishah Rabbeinu is in Neshama Klolis, and Meishah Rabbeinu connects the pintel yid of our Neshama. It's Ayim with the Neshama Malabeshes Beguf, and he gives us the koyach to go through the Midbar Amen. Vezehu, and this is why the pasuk says, "Vayichtev dafke." Meish Rabbeinu writes, "The neshama is b'shorish, but b'chinas chakika, the neshama in its shadeish is carved. Chakuka is metachas kisei kavod. It's engraved under the glorious throne of the Eibush. It's one with halakus. And the Meish Rabbeinu is bringing it down from that level into this world. Is bringing it forward from carved letters to written letters. In other words, it's a yirida. Carved is better than written, <laughs> but written is in this world, and you need to be in this world." To accomplish the work in this world, just like about the teda itself. Yes, in the chal sal luches, there's the teda, the way it's carved into the luches habris. The A's is actually in carved letters. Umeisha peilam shach, umeisha ben who affects bringing it forward. Me bechinas chakika from the way it's carved. Li bechinas kiv the way it's written in teda, and in neshama yisrael. So taka, you're bringing it to a lower level, but that lower level allows the purpose to be realized. The teda may have been in a higher level, higher state. The neshama may have been in a higher state. And now it's coming down to a state of ksiva, but this is very advantageous because it allows us to do the work of birudim and to be zeche to cause an ali in ourselves and ali in the whole world. Om them, however. Now we're holding number seven. And this number seven you didn't have in the previous maimed at all, and I wonder why, but here the Rebbe adds it. And in the maimed of Tavshin Lamid, this point is very, very important. Since Vayichtev Meisha means you're going away from Eis Hakika, from being one with the Eibishter, to Eis Ksiva, to being separate from the Eibishter, but drawing strength from the way we were one with the Eibishter, to do Avedas Habirurim, says the Rebbe Baham Shachazu, when you bring down the Neshama from the way it is Mohammed Alakus in Maitze Ahim, to being, so to speak, in this real world, which is in some way separate from the Eibishter, it was called Masa Ahim, the Mishedesh HaNeshama. When you bring down from the root of the neshama, l'regel sheb neshama, as it comes down into the foot of the neshama in this world, a change can take place. And the change could be undesirable. L'kutet has another thing. That v'yichtev Moshe, hainu, Moshe Rabbeinu doesn't only write, meaning, he lowers it from the madreg of Chakika to Ksiva, but it's chesom Moshe Rabbeinu's writing. Moshe Rabbeinu's writing is writing actually a ceiling, meaning, Ceiling, not a, a top of a building, but ceiling means to to make something permanent and un, and fixed and unchanging. He brings down the koyches of the neshama of the madrega of hakika to ksiva, but he fixes them with a chasima that makes them permanent. Ukmeishu bekra, as it is in the pasuk, vechosav la vegamer lefidas rab meir. That when you write a get, it says the word vechosav la that rab meir translates vechosav vechosav. That you have to have a, a chasima, a signature, and the signature makes it absolute. The signature makes it unchanging. Kain gamba yichtev meisha. When it says meisha, Rabbeinu wrote. It doesn't only mean he wrote, me, namely, bringing from a level of chakika to a level of ksiva that should be in this world. But Caleb atma gami yenachasim. He brings it into this world. The neshedesh haneshama is brought into the neshama malabeshes beguf, but it's given a power that it should never change. The reason down here in this world, the Nishamas manifesting to be able to make the Birudim must be also compared to a Chsima, is because nothing should change in the Nishama. Just like signing a document, before the, the document is signed, you can change it. Until the very last line, you can change it. is the last line. Once the signature is placed on the document, the way it's signed is the way it remains. You cannot change it. So the Rebbe says, Meish, and Rabbeinu gives us the Kech to be Eisek and Avedis Habirurim through Vayichtev Meish. 
And Meishah Rabbeinu gives us the Kech, that that Koyach, which he gave us, should never change, because the Vayich Dev Meishah includes also a Chasimah. And that's the Pshat, Vayich Dev Meishah Le'Meitzayim Le'Maseyim, he brings on the Shedesh HaNeshama to the Neshama Le'Bashas Beguf, in Eifin of Ksiv and Eifin of Chasimah. As again, as I mentioned, these last few lines, we didn't have in the previous Maimed. Omam Shabbat because the Pasuk continues, Ve'el Le'Maseyim Le'Meitzayim, that after the Neshama, comes into this goof and into this world and it's Isaac and Avedis Habirurim. With the Koyach that it gets from Meshach Rabbeinu, the Neshama goes back to its Shadish and like the Rebbe explained at length in the previous Maimed, it goes even higher than its Shadish. Shaydei Ha'iri Delamata by the Neshama coming into this world and living in the desert and a dangerous place spiritually. Nas Ilim HaNesham, the Neshama has an Aliyah. Lebechinus made to Ahim to the Shadish HaNeshama, but it's Lamai Lom Bebechinus made to Ahim, Shalif Nezeh, it's higher than the Shadish HaNeshama. Before the Neshama came into this Gulf, a commission is by Elubur, which the Rebbe explained at length in the previous Maimed. Now, in the previous Maimed, there were two things that the Rebbe said. Number one, that the Shadish of Neshama is an Ak, an Epidemius Ak, which is a very high level. And number two, that Meshach Rabbein was in Yenis Teda. So when it says, Vayichtev Meshach, Meshach Rabbein gave Yidna Koyach, the Koyach that he gave Yidin do the avoidance from the Shedish HaTera, not higher than the Shedish HaTera. But when the Yiddish finished the Birurim, and they go back to the Shedish HaMaka, they go back to the Shedish HaMaka, which is so much higher than the Tera, that Yidin make an Ali in the Tera. That's what the Rebbe said in the previous Maimed. And in that Maimed, I had some questions, which I observed, and I didn't answer them because I don't have answers for them. But let's learn this Maimed. For you, when said this idea, that the Neshama is given care to do Avedis HaBirurim, and when the Neshama finishes Avedis HaBirurim, not only does the Neshama go back to its Shedah Shemaka, but it goes even higher. What we're calling Yiridi Tzedek Aliyah, Abi Machkos, Avadi, this is classic, Avadi, Islam, the Pasuk, Kikol, Kilei, Allah, Avadi, Yichyan, Kalkol, Meitzipi, Abai, Yichyan, Adam. When a person eats bread, there's the physical nourishment and chemicals and energy that you get from the bread itself. And then there's the Meitzipi, Abai, the Ruchnius of the bread, Hakavon, Advar, Avai, Shabalachem, in the bread is a Neshama. And then the Neshama in that bread is the Dvar Avai, the word of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And of course, an, a, a plant is lower than an animal, which is lower than a person, but it has a higher shade This is explained in so many places in Hasidus. The Kiv and Shalach, the bread is lower than a person. That's why a person has to work on the bread, and bring clarity to the bread, and refinement to the bread. He then made it that itself as a proof. The sparks within the bread that have fallen lower and need a yid's help to redeem it. Shor from their root, as Mabchin and Al Syeh says, in a higher level, may I make the Piyavai Shabbat than the Nisham of a person by himself. Which is why, the person is a Makabal, receives. May I make the Piyavai Shabbat after eating bread? The bread adds something to the person that's more than the person is by himself, and even the Nishama has an aliyim. And when the person involves himself with bread, and he's mavadah the bread, so understand that there's a bidur, and the bidur elevates the bread. In the yid, there's no bidur. But after there's a bidur, in the bread, there's an ali in the person. Now the Rebbe says words which he did not say in the previous Maim, and I find them fascinating, because they're incongruous, they're inconsistent with the previous Maim. The previous Maim, the Shedesh HaNesham is Teda. The return of the Nesham is higher than Teda, to the Shedesh of Nesham is which is Moshe Shanatzma is higher than Teda. Here he says it in Signa Nakabola. The source of a neshama before the neshama comes into this world. It's from Zayim Tachtein is the Atik, which are mislabish in Arich. In other words, have a shachas to Elam as even though they're Atik. Mashain can I make him shall the said the Nishama returns to its root and source after it does the Avedah Sabirudim is higher than from which the Nishama came in the first, which is Gimel Rishain is the Ak, which is the Maila Meam Shach. Now, that's what the Rebbe says. The Rebbe doesn't explain it, he just states it. And his Mitzayan in the heart of 50 to look at the Tatum. So, this, the one sentence that I have to say is, I don't know. But clearly, the Shedesh Nisham is very high, and the Ali of the Nisham is to an even higher place. In order to reach the higher level of Gimel Rishayin, is the Atik is Raka de Halah, only Bedera Halah. Now, I can read this in two ways. Number one, that Allah means Birurim. In other words, to get to the higher level, you have to come into this world. And number two, this is not about Birurim. This is about Aliyah. But some Aliyah, some levels of godliness, you could bring down into the world. The very highest levels of godliness, there's no way you can bring it down. You can only go up to it. And I think that the second idea is also intended here. This is a Maimed which is built in Mugis, so it's very, very hard to know. 
Um, the first idea is safe, right? Halal means we move out of the world, the neshama has an aliyah. The second idea is much edeler, that when the aliyah, the birudim is finished, and the neshama is having its khar of aliyah, it's only with that halal. However, Shazeh, the only way for that to happen is through birudim first. But first, we make for Hashem a home by descending into Midbar Amim and struggling with Midbar Amim, which is Avidya Sabiruri. Shamit is in Yenadiruhu that the ultimate idea of a home is like it is by a physical person. Shinim Sabachal Atzmus Amus, the person is there in its entirety. Similarly, Dirabit Achtim is the whole of Atzmus Amus and Sal Baruch is in this world. And we facilitate this through Birudim. Obeze Fanamel, these two techniques of Amshach Avahalo, of bringing the Abishtid into the world and raising the world up to the Abishtid, is like Tzim Bemishpat Yipad Rabbi Tzaka, then it says Chosik Tzas. So I'm going to say, I don't know. The, the Maniach says Chosik Tzas, and the Koyri is going to say, Yechvesnisht. So the Pashtus, what he's saying is that the only way for Nisham to have an Ali is by getting involved in the Mulchama and the Birur, which is Betachtein. So there's the Vayichta of Meshem and Tzalem saying, bringing down a Koyach from the Shedesh and Neshama to the Neshama of Bachas Bagov. Then there's the Midbar Amam the Birudim. And the end is Ve'elam as Elam. It's Eim. You go back to the same Shedesh and even higher. And he concludes, Vazel, Sha'amar Akos of Afach Te'evlam Asimcha, that you have the daft that transforms sadness into joy. You can't say the sadness finishes. You have to say the sadness is transformed. Why do you have to say you have to transform the evil, the, the sadness? We know about the the most important thing is the action. The only thing that matters is that the end should be joy. Forget There's no Evlam. The Evlam is finished. You go into this world, you struggle, you win, and then you have joy. Why do you have to say that you're transforming the sadness into joy? The answer is the only way to get it is by descending. And since the only way to have the Aliyah is by Yerida, the, av- the Avelos, the Yerida itself is very much a part of the ultimate Aliyah which follows. And the Rebbe says, V'zeo, Tachas Kol, Lama, so is this the purpose of all of the journeys. La HaPoich, to transform. Es Amid, Baragor Lovaneri, the great and awesome desert, which is representative of Klipa. Sheiha, Pech, that it be transformed from a place which is Asher Le'yosh of Adam Sham Le'greyese. Le'yeis Bechin in Nailis. Shabbat would be a very lofty level of the level. Like it says in the Kutan of Bamidbar. Shalomayla Bechinus Adam, you go from being lower than Adam to being higher than Adam, and there's one Pasak, Hashel Leyashav Adam Sham. There's Leyashav Adam Sham Legreyas, it's less than Adam. Lower than Atilas. And there's the Leyashav Adam Shalom Ayusa, which is higher than Atilas, higher than Adam, and this is the Yidi Tzedek Aliyah. Kele Adam Ulinach, Vedafke, Ayadei, Aveda. Bafiha Se'elam, only when you're Isaac and Birudim, changing over the world. And making it into Kedusha, Nasa Aliyah and Neshama, the Neshama has an Aliyah, and Aliyah and the Neshama is Lamayla Mimokam, Shemeni Yodah goes even higher than it was Chatechila. So there is the Avoid itself, which is the Birudim, and the Birudim are very, very important. You don't get through the Birudim, you're Mahapech the Birudim, you're Mahapech the Klip into Kedusha, because that's how the Aliyah happens. And then at the end is Aliyah and the Neshama. Number 11. Before you can get to the double consolation which happens after the three weeks. Now you have to remember, the Rebbe is saying this, my name, on Shabbos Mevorchim of Matas Masi, right? The next Shabbos would be Dvorim. So it's the middle Shabbos of the three weeks, I'm not sure. But he's already talking about what's going to happen after the three weeks. After the three weeks is going to be Nachmu Nachmu Ami. He's saying, but the only way to get to the Nachamu, Nachamu, Amiv, after the three weeks, is having Bein HaMitzvah. Ki Iker HaMaila, the truest and highest level Yidin attain, when they go up, is Aydei HaFichas HaMitzvah, by transforming the Mitzvah. The Davka Aydei Min HaMitzvah, because we were in the narrowness, cross the then you have another Merech Yo, you reach Merech HaAtzmi. But it's not that you get past the Min HaMitzvah, you transform the Min HaMitzvah. That in Merchav Ha'atzmi, you reach through the Meitzah, whose life is lived with the maximum of expansiveness, of Gaiv, if you will. The foundation of his life is total Bittl, which is Tachas Abitl in Ameitzah. Similarly, in order to reach the Merchav Ka, you have to have them in Ameitzah. So it's not just that you're surviving the Golos, but you're being mavadid and elevating the Golos. And that's the basis, that's the source of the Keach for the Aliyah. 
So, what I have to say is the Nesina's Kerch to bring the Shedish and the Sham into the Shamu Vesh to the Avoid. And the Avoid is Mavar and Mahapach, the world, and raising it up. And then you have the Elam as Elam, it's Elam to go even higher than the Shedish and the Sham, the way it was before it came into this world. Pretty much everything we just learned, we learned in the previous Maimir. Now we go back to the very beginning of the Maimir and learn something new, which we didn't have in the previous Maimir. So go back to page 273, we have the number 12, which is close to the bottom of the page. Let's begin to read, and we'll tie it together afterwards. The Pshatas. Now remember, I'm reading the beginning of the Maimir after learning most of the Maimir. That the idea of Masois and the Midbar Ha'amim and the Birurim and all the different models of where the Membeis Masois apply, the idea of all of this is the Hine Omer Razal, it's written in Chazal. I see the Eretz Yisrael, Shetespash at Bechol Oilam Kuli. Eretz Yisrael is going to expand, spread out to encompass the whole world. The whole world is going to be in the Madrega of Eretz Yisrael. Now, this is an infant nigla, right? Infant halacha. There's a halacha of Mesif and Al Hazores. You can make the Beis Hamikdash bigger. You have to have Lachme uh, Toida, uh, I think, right? And then there's Mesif Malair. You could make halacha Yerushalayim bigger. For this, you have to have, I think, Maizah Sheni. But there's a ritual. The Yumal discuss it, and Rambam discusses it. There's a process by which you can halachically make the Beis Hamikdash bigger, and there's no maximum size. There's a process by which you could make Yerushalayim bigger. There's no maximum size. But there is no halacha about making it Yisrael bigger other than Kivash. You have to conquer Eretz Yisrael. I can sit in that number. First, you have to conquer the lands that Abishta gave you. And if after you finish conquering all the lands that Abishta gave you, you conquer more lands, you can be Makadash and Melichas Eretz Yisrael. And they're not going to have the din of Surya, right? The din of Surya is that they were semi like Eretz Yisrael, semi like Chutzlaras, because David conquered them before all of Eretz was conquered. So there's halachic models, nigla models, by which you can make the Beis Amikdash bigger, by which you could make Yerushalayim bigger, and by which you could make Eretz Yisrael bigger, right? And the Medish is saying that's going to happen in the Poyal. How big will Eretz Yisrael be? Kol Elam Kulei, Ibn Eretz Yisrael. And he continues and he says, V'oz, ye Eretz Yisrael b'medreges Yerushalayim. The Achshav, the whole of Eretz Yisrael is going to be Mesif and Al-Ha, um, al Ha'ir, right? The city of Yishlam is going to be expanded to be all of Eretz Yisrael, and he brings again a Chazal. Zeo Mash Yerushalayim, Shetispash at Bechol Eretz Yisrael, it's the same Sikta, right? That Yishlam is going to expand to the whole of Eretz Yisrael. And he adds, Yerushalayim, to the Yasid Lavi, Yerushalayim, Yerushalayim, Lavi, Yer Eid, Bemaila, Gavay, Yes, is giving a higher level and doesn't specify. I'm going to guess, and I wrote it on the margin, that the Mesif and Al Azores, the whole. Uh, the Azores, the whole of the Tzabes Hamikdash is going to be expanded to encompass all of Yerushalayim, but the Rebbe doesn't say it explicitly. Now let me just give you the Pnimius, the Kabbalah. And I know this from the Daita Moskva, that um, the difference between Eret Yisrael and Chutz Loretz is that Eret Yisrael, Chutz Loretz, with Manazeh, is like Asiya, Beruchnius, and Eret Yisrael is like Yitzira. And the, the Rebbe Rasha brings the Mam Viadaita that Chutz Lord, it says, Eidah Vedazar Betahar Ahim, Demish Ain Lilaka, all the different expressions you have in the, in the Mesech Tixubis and in other places. That living in Chutz Lord, it says, like you have no God. And the Havana Shabbat is, the meaning is, the idea is, the philosophy is, that in Chutz Lord, it's not only outside of Israel, not only the Gazer Wal Gusha Wal Avira, Eretz Amim Tomei, Aved Eretz Amim Tomei, they automatically metame. That's the Nigla de Teire because we're worried about Beis Sapras and other Suffolk Tumas. But the Pneumius of that, the Hasidus behind that Nigla, is that there's no Gile of Ashgacha Not only you don't see miracles, you don't even see the hand of Hashem in nature. So you live in Chutzlade, you live outside of Eretz Yisrael, Elim Kim and Hagen it looks like the world is going all by itself. And that's the Pshat Dei Meshem Mik Misha and Lea Laka. Eved Avet Yisrael and Betahara. When you live outside of Eretz Yisrael, it seems to you that Hashem is not a Balabais over this world. And that's the opposite of Achtas Hashem in a fundamental way. So Eretz Yisrael is like Asiya. Pardon me. Chutzlot is like Asiya. Eretz Yisrael is like Yitzira. 
the way it's explained in the Maimed, if you live in Eretz Yisrael, you see Hashgacha Pratis. You don't see miracles, see Hashgacha Pratis. And I remember there's a lady who told me many, many years ago that in Eretz Yisrael today even, it's easier to see the hand of Hashem than it is in Chutz Laaretz. So, the way I sort of develop it in my mind is in Chutz Laaretz, you don't see even Hashgacha Pratis. In Eretz Yisrael, you see Hashgacha Pratis the way it's draped in Teva. So in Yerushalayim, you see miracles. But the miracles you see in Yerushalayim could be miracles which are Malubish and Teva, that would be the Madre Gabriel. And of course, in the Beis Hamikdash, Asar and Nisim, Nasu, the Beis Hamikdash, this is the Madre of Atzilas. So, when you say Asida and Atisal Shutaspash and Bechal Arat, this means that in the whole world, you'll see the hand of Hashem in a way of revealed Ashkoch Pratis, which is Alderach Marshal. The Madreg of Yitzira. So in Eretz Yisrael, there will be the whole Madreg of Yerushalayim, which will be Al-Darach Moshul, the idea of seeing miracles, but the miracles are limited to Teva. And in Yerushalayim, be like in the Beis HaMikdash, that the miracles will be Lamayel Manateva. To give you an example of a miracle in Teva, which happens in Eretz Yisrael, in Yerushalayim, that's the idea of Asa B'Shil Shatisasha. They wouldn't be in El Rego, they left their cities abandoned, and the Abishta protected their cities. That's not just a, a Nina Vashgocha, that's a Nina Venes. But be that as it may, that's how in my head, and that's all this is, this is just my understanding of what it means that the whole world becomes Eretz Yisrael. You can see Ashkoch Abratis, which of course means that if the whole world becomes Eretz Yisrael, that means all the Goyim are raised up to a Madrege, where in their lives they see Hashem. They see Hashem in their lives on a regular basis within Teva. And Eretz Yisrael is going to be a land of miracles, Yerushalayim is going to be a land of overt miracles, and so on. But this is what happens when Mashiach comes. Um, sham, and the Rebbe continues, and he says, and the Alter Rebbe, who brings this idea in the Maimorim of Eila Masa, he explains, Nasa the idea that the whole world becomes Eretz Yisrael, and the whole Eretz Yisrael becomes Yerushalayim, and the whole Yerushalayim becomes Oid Yese, which I'm just going to guess means Beis Hamikdash. It's achieved by us going through the 42 journeys, which is what the Maimir and the previous Maimir are about. Shaidei Hamasoyz b'Midbar. By us journeying to the desert, which is the union of Birurim. The Oren goes before us. With the clouds of glory. They're killing the snakes and scorpions in the desert. But this is all the means to us being able to do our Avedes Abirurim. Because the Midbar is Eres Nachas Al which is a Pasuk. Says that Rabbi Nadei Zeh they're subduing the world, and Lachet is not just subduing the world, but like the Rebbe said later in the Maimur, which I already learned, it's Vafachtis Evlam Lasasin. You're transforming Klippa into Kedusha. So Davida Sabirudim, the work of the Membez of the 42 journeys, is, is, is struggling with the world and uplifting it and transforming it. The Schar of that, the end of that, is just like in the previous Maimur. The Rebbe says, you finish the Membe's Masois, Eila Mas Eim Lameitz Eim, you go back to Yeshede Shemak of the Neshama, and even higher, the Neshama has an Aliyah. So in this Maimed, it's not just the Neshama that has an Aliyah, it's the whole world has an Aliyah. Says the Rebbe, Yuchlo, Lias, Laosad, Lavi, Hagilui, the Mashiach comes, there'll be the possibility, there'll be a revelation of a seed that it's Yisrael, Shutas Pasha Bechol, and of course, becomes the whole world. And to me, Lanias deity, and that's what this is. My humble opinion is that this is not a part of Birudim. After Birudim is finished, just like after the Birudim is finished, the Neshama has an Aliyah. After the Birudim is finished, the world has an Aliyah. That the whole world becomes Eretz Yisrael, the whole Eretz becomes Yerushalayim, the whole Yerushalayim becomes the Beis Hamikdash, and so on. Now turn to page 274, top of the page, Val Piha Mavuel And as we discussed in the previous Maimir, the notion of the 42 journeys is laid. This is not only what happened during the 40 years that the Jewish people were in the desert between the years 2448 and 2488. This is something which goes on until Mashiach comes. Until the coming of Mashiach, says the Rebbe. Three lines into page 274. Accordingly, we say the fact that through our journeys, Paul, we influence she lost the love her Indian. That when Mashiach comes, there should be the phenomena of despite that it's all the the whole world should be at its role. What effects that law us the love the whole world is at its role is laid. I come as soy, but doesn't only mean doesn't mean only that because 
thousands of years ago, we spent 40 years in a desert, we did 42 journeys, so when Mashiach comes, then the world is going to have an Aliyah. But rather, the entire history of the Jewish people, which is these 42 journeys. Kalil, which includes even the journeys taken after we were already physically living in Eretz Yisrael. In other words, even in Eretz Yisrael, if you divide all of our history into 42 Masois, and the time of Bayis Nishni and Bayis Sheni, and before, in other words, if you count from the time the Yidin came into Eretz Yisrael to Churban Bayis Nishni and the 420 years of Bayis Sheni, you're talking well over a thousand years, about a third of our history. So if they're a third of our history, you have to assume they're a third of the Masois. They're also part of the journey in Midbar Am, also part of the Vedas Abirudim. The Gama Masois with Managos are naturally what's happened during the times of Golos. They all contribute to the Birur, which sets up that when the Birur is complete, just like there's an, an Aliyah, and Yid there's Aliyah in the whole world. Hine. In Yinzeh says the Rebbe, this idea of Asi Deret Yisrael, that the whole world becomes Deret Yisrael, Hayyudu Gumasi Kvar, had a simile, although not the same, but similar idea, Bizman Shleim, in time, the Shleim HaMelech. That it says in Sfarim, in footnote 18, the Rebbe has been signed to Azayi Kasher Kaim, Asi Deret Yisrael, Moshe Shleim HaMelech, is the 15th generation. And out of the 15th generation, the moon of the Jewish people was full. And therefore Shleim lived in Yisrael, in Yerushalayim. The Nitsutas were in his body by themselves. So Oz Bowe Love Kola and Nitsutas then all the sparks came to him. Mikol Lailam Kola from the whole world. Vafilu Mishwa, even from the place of Shwa, which is someplace in Africa. Aide Malkath Shwa, so Shleim was Mfara Birurim. Now in the next paragraph, the Rebbe, which I learned with you earlier in the Maimed, the Rebbe speaks about Birurim Bederach Sholem, right? Shleim is sitting in the Birurim and coming to him. So here the Mashmoah says that Shleim made the whole world into Eretz Yisrael, but L'chayr of the is, Shleim was Mavara Birurim in the whole world. And a second, a secondary aspect, after Shleim is Mavara Birurim in the whole world, the whole world becomes Eretz Yisrael. V'hainu translates the Rebbe, I'm on page 274, first paragraph, six lines from the end, she espaches Eretz Yisrael b'chol ha'elam. The idea that Eretz spreads to the whole world, Hayyab Eifan Gezeh was in such a fashion, she yigiyah fila b'shvat, reached even shvat. Now this is confusing to me, because I see it as two steps. Step number one, the Birurim, and what Malkus for Hashem, 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 Yerushalayim, is emphatically explained as a Birur. So you have to say that the idea of Asid El Tisrael, Shetus Paz, B'chorot, is consequent of that, is after that. And the Rebbe seems to be saying that it's the other way around, that because the Tisrael was in the whole world, these Birurim happened. And that's a problem, it's a problem with me, because I'm the one insisting that this is the say that Advarim. First there's the Birurim, and then the world becomes Eretz Yisrael, which is the Chayr Pshat in the Maimir, as he wrote, it's from the Kutatayr, on the bottom of the previous page. So we have a question to Rav Nebenanj. Getting to the point, V'hainu, V'in Yinzeh, that the idea that even in the time of Shleim HaMelech, the whole world became temporarily Eretz Yisrael, V'harayi was Mavada Berurim and Mela, is a hachon, is a preparation, Lasita Eretz Yisrael. To the idea that in the future at Israel, Shetespasha Bechol Lailam Kuli is going to expand to encompass the whole world. Sheila Asad Love, which is going to happen after Mashiach comes, after the end of Birud. The Alderach then, of course, this also includes Gambin and Gelam Asoyel, which was Managlaus, the journey that you didn't take in times of Golos. Shadei Yahweh did Israel Bechol Makem Esagos. We've traveled all over the world. And like the Rebbe explains, Taki Nesicha, Vesei Benesh of Babel, which I said. In the beginning of the class on this Maimed, that we go from closer to farther, the last Birudim and the lowest Birudim that pay Elim Heim Ho'inyan, that we affect through going to these plays of Vada Birudim. And again, the way I understand it, after the Birudim are complete and every spark is raised up and put where it's supposed to be, and after the Birudim are complete, so then, to Spasha Dej, Salbuchal Elim Kul, it's all expensive to the whole world. So it's ironic, it's dual. The sparks of Elokus may be taken from Chutzlarat and put in there to sell where they belong. But only when everything in the right place is in the right place, and arguably Chutzlaris no longer has Nitzitz Kedusha. Now, once there's a tikkun in the whole world, that is all the Chutzlaris very happy. The end of Birudim is an aliyah. So, on the previous Maim, at the end of Eila Masay is the Eila Mas Eilam it's Ahim, the aliyah in the Shamas Yisrael. And in this Maim, he doesn't bring the Pasuk Eila Mas Eilam it's Ahim because he's not talking about Yidin, it's aliyah in the whole world. Now let's go to the end and finish the Maimid. But it has to happen in this order. You gotta struggle. Go to where the Klipas, where the Nitsutis are, and be Mavada then, but that a Chislap shows. 
And yeah, they say now, so ultimately the effect is Bosley Lagan and Lagnuna, the baby she comes back into this world, the world becomes the Italy's one of Patakhtain. Well, Ms. Gal and it reveals Bechina Nihilis Yesir a very, very high level, which is even higher Mikeshina Batakhtainim Hoysa, even the level of Ikeshina. Which is revealed in the world in the beginning of creation. Like the Rebbe explains in the very beginning of the very first Maimir Basil Lagani. What Ikeshina means that it means they didn't save Shafnia Tsimtsum. But it's only a lower mother that gives it in Seishef Niyatzimzim. And La Asad Lover, there's going to be even a higher revelation. As it's explained in so many places in Chasidus, it's never talked about it so many times. That twice based upon the Mixiv Teldis Moli, twice the word Teldis is written with two vavs. First of all, Teldis Hashmai Vadas Behi Baram, which means Elam Amiluay never. They made the world perfect. But there's another El Teldis, which is El Teldis Peretz, which talks about Mashiach. Peretz is Mashiach Zayd, Allah Peretz Lefneim. Which is longer Mashiach to Allah Peretz of Neim, that the tail days Peretz Mole is higher than the tail days Hashemayim Vadas Mole. Aval Afa became the fact is the tail days Mole, the tail days Peretz, the idea that by Peretz the world is full is La Osid is Naila Yes and Mea tail days Mole, the Elam Eloi Nivra. Hashem made the world perfect. And of course, then there's need to perfect it further. And tail days Peretz is beyond that, similarly. The Ikish Hedim Tachtainim Hoisa was in the beginning of creation. Al Derech Moshal El Hameloi Nivra, and the Giloi of Elokus, which is really Asad Love, which is even a higher Madrege, is just like Eil Tel Des Peretz, is higher than Eil Tel Tel Zashmayim Va'Aretz Behi Barim. And when the Birudim are finished, the world has an Aliyah, and that's why Chutzos become Bet Yisrael, and so becomes Yerushalayim, and so becomes the Beis Hamikdash, and so on. If we wanted to talk, of course, there's much to talk about, but we'll stop. We're going to leave it as it is. And the Mitzvah Shem, next time we'll do the next Maimir.